A football fundamental. The impact of opposing. The ratings are showing parents and players and coaches and leagues which specific helmets best reduce concussion risk. So we do a number of impacts in the lab that represent the most common impact scenarios associated with concussion and then summarize it so people can make informed decisions when buying a helmet. The way we developed the rating system was by collecting data directly from youth football players. So they had sensors in their helmets. We knew how hard they hit their head, how frequently, and what locations on the helmet. So we replicated that in the lab and then identified which helmets best reduce risk. Forces on the gridiron. The hit. Um, so the best performing group was all awarded five stars. And then there was a four star group and then there was a three star group. So we just saw different grouping or clustering between the helmet types. There's seven total helmets that are rated as five stars, and every helmet manufacturer had at least one helmet rated as five stars. Sure, well, they were able to manage the impact energy better than other helmets. And when we start to compare that five-star group to, say, the three-star group, uh, the major difference we saw was that the lower-performing helmets had a front pad that we would characterize as too stiff. Um, so those helmets could be improved simply by reducing the stiffness of that front pad. Okay, so the first thing you guys need to do is watch the video and then... No, there's always going to be concussion in sport and helmets are one part of the answer. Um, but the larger part is reducing the number of head impacts in sports. So if you can eliminate those high risk scenarios in youth football and kids aren't hitting their heads as much, they're going to have less concussions. But you're never going to get rid of all head impacts. So when you still do hit your head, you want to have the very best head protection.